Hello. Hey, hello everyone from the Basque country. We are in the Basque mountains. I think these are called the Basque highlands. We got here yesterday after a very long day on the road. We drove through four countries in one day. Italy. Monaco. Friends. Still friends. Still friends. Still friends. Still friends. Okay, España, finally. Anyway, as I said, we are back in Spain, and as you know, I am from here, but lived uh, many years in the US. She is from the US and lived many years here in Spain. This is a video that we've wanted to make for a long time, and it's just to share our experiences and thoughts and highlight some of the differences between the two countries. I think it could be fun, so why not? Let's do it. So I'm gonna be rooting for the US and she's gonna be rooting for Spain. That's I'm pretty sure that's what's gonna happen. Uh, the first point that I wanted to talk about is the landscapes and wilderness. Uh, there are beautiful landscapes everywhere in the world. I just find that in the US and especially in the West, it's easier to get away and farther away from people, even if it's only because of the vast size of the country and there are wilder areas. That's something I like, even though having some structures, as I mentioned before in some videos, is kind of cool for images sometimes because it creates that contrast and that drama. So I like both. Now food. Food is really important to us and it's gonna, the most of this video is going to be about food. I think what I've noticed the most is that in small towns in the US, it's there's always fast food chains everywhere. It's actually hard to find traditional food or just better quality fresher food, maybe more local food. Whereas in Spain, not everywhere of course, but sometimes in smaller towns, it's actually easier to find fresher, more traditional and local food. That's true. That makes it very hard for us when we are on a road trip in America to find good food. You usually find a lot of junk food and just your only options are just McDonald's and Burger King and stuff like that. While here in Europe, actually being in smaller towns, sometimes it makes, the, makes it easier for you to find good food. Something that caught my attention the first times that I was going to restaurants there in the US is the amount of options that you have, not only for vegetarians and vegans. Just sitting down to order breakfast, they ask you a lot of questions. They, I still remember how that when they asked me, how do you want your fried eggs? They're like, what? I want fried eggs. I didn't know that they were, that they were ready or willing to make them in different ways uh, just for me. And this applies to everything else, like dressing for salads, the type of bread, the side dishes, I don't know, a lot of options that you have in the US versus here, where you usually have more fixed menus. A very common complaint of, of Americans visiting Spain or even living in Spain is that shops and grocery stores all close down around 2 p.m. and don't open usually until 4. That's wild. Yeah, that's not something that you see in the US and that uh, comes down to, to working hours. I worked here for many years. I work in the US as well. 9 to 5 in the US is not a thing here in Spain. Here is more like from 9 to 7 with those two hours in between for lunch, which makes it m much harder, in my opinion, to uh, balance your work life and your personal life. I really, really like the approach in the US where you eat really quick for lunch. Lunch is like a super huge huge ritual here in Spain is the main meal, of, main meal of the day whereas in the US it's just something that you eat really quick and you keep working so you can get out of there as soon as possible and just head back home and have a big dinner. Service. When it comes to service I don't like tipping. It's something that I don't like. I believe that servers and waiters and waitresses should make a living wage from the very beginning but I gotta say that the service in the US is so much better than in Spain. It's very easy to go to go to a restaurant in Spain and to be ignored for a while for five minutes and you don't know if they even uh, saw you. While in the US they come to your table every few minutes to check on you if everything's okay, if you want more uh, of these, if you want more water or anything. And in Spain I feel like many times I have to fight to get their attention just because I want another coffee or another beer or something like that. I think that might have to do with the way people have meals too. At least in my experience here, even something as simple as getting a snack and a coffee at a cafe, you're not going to be in a hurry to do that. You sit down. Yeah. Usually. 
yeah, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to have a conversation. And I think that could be why sometimes the service is just much slower. Just they, they know you're not going to be in a rush because you're here to have a meal and spend time with the people you're with. And I like that. I like slowing down uh, while having food or whatever, a drink, but on the weekends and when you have time. But we're, during the week when you're just hungry but you have to keep working, I really like being able to just get in, get out. Oh, leftovers, that's huge. So here in Spain, it's more and more common lately. You see it more and more often, but in the US it happens all the time. In the US, if you don't eat all your food, you can take it home with you. They have every place, every restaurant, they have boxes to go ready. So they put the leftovers there and you can have them for breakfast the next day or for that lunch or, yeah, or lunch or whatever. I really like that in Spain, that doesn't happen. I think that could be related to Americans normally having snacks or water on hand yes. and so when you actually get to the restaurant that you want to eat at you may not be super hungry and combined with the fact that they say that portion sizes are way bigger in the u.s i don't know if that's always true i've seen very big portions in spain too especially where we live but that actors. is very true americans always have something with them and something to eat or something to drink especially to drink even here we are in a hiking and no one i've seen no one carrying a, a bottle of water in their hands that in the u.s doesn't even happen on the streets of a big city you know you see them with water just in case they get thirsty i guess in my opinion americans are friendlier she thinks that that is more on a surface in a surface level like they don't really mean it but it's still nice this is related to something else that i've noticed is that i think that americans are in general more positive and they are more optimistic about the future and their potential while in spain here people are more content i don't know if this is the right word more content or more satisfied with what they have that positive mindset has uh, influenced me uh, a lot in a good way, I believe. I think exaggeration is a point that we can talk about, especially with Americans. And I never realized it until you pointed it out to me, <laughs> but I would have never known, I don't think. But now I work in a company where we there's a bunch of Americans and there's a bunch of Europeans. And something that comes up um, kind of frequently is exaggeration and how Americans communicate so differently from people in other countries. Yeah, in America, everything is awesome, everything is the best or the worst. Yes, and if, if an American were to ask you, how are you doing, and you responded, fine, I'm fine, I would be a little worried, like, uh-oh, maybe they're not okay. Maybe I should ask more questions or figure out what's bothering them. Because fine is not fine. You need to be good or, or great or having a good day or whatever. Yes, and it is much easier to get a compliment and a word of, uh, I don't know, empowerment or something like that in the U.S. versus here in Spain, where people rarely, rarely give you any compliments or apologize for anything or say thank you, things like that. It's very rarely, but you know, when they do it, they really mean it. <laughs> very cute husky there. Last thing we wanted to talk about in this video is money. Money is uh, very important in every country in this, uh, in this planet and it's going to drive the decisions of uh, many people no matter what. But in the US it feels like this is uh, one or two steps uh, farther. One of the things that shocked me the most when I first moved there, and I already knew a little bit about this because you read about it, you watch the news and stuff like that, but it was about debt and the amount of debt that people get into to do stuff, to buy houses, to go to college. I'm talking about people who I personally met, people who had a half a million dollars in debt, in student debt, and people who were uh, maxing out their credit cards because they couldn't get along and that was the only way for them to uh, get some money and then they had to pay those uh, loans or those credit cards uh, back at a 25% interest rates and things like that. It's just crazy. And people here in Spain don't have that kind of problems. Yeah, you might get a loan to buy a car, to, to get an apartment, but you don't have debt by default, like it feels like the average American has a ton of debt and you have no choice but to work and to always pursue a better paid job because you have to pay everything that you've been doing during your whole life and that is just crazy to me. Anyway, these were just a few of our experiences in the US and here in Spain. We are going to keep uh, going on our little hike. We are going back home tomorrow. We'll be back to our regular schedule pretty soon. Until then, have fun out there and take care and see you soon. Bye 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 bye. Okay, can you hear us? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. What bars?
Those green ones. That's yes. the sound. Very hot. So hello.